Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Papa Moon's Cartoon HD. About to react to this Sunny V2 vid. It's titled Coco Melon, the most evil channel on YouTube. <laughs> what? Coco Melon? To be honest, I don't even know what Coco Melon is. I know it's a cartoon, but I, I have no idea what it consists of whatsoever. But I've definitely heard it. So the name is very popular. But how is it evil? Let's see what's happening. Let's watch. My son is almost two, and I've been letting him watch Coco Melon. But now I had to get him speech therapy yet so I can get him to talk. There oh, are hundreds and hundreds kid of stupid. anecdotes in which parents mention the exact same problem. The Coco Melon show is so insanely addictive, it's being compared to nicotine and causing developmental issues amongst the kids who can't stop watching. Children's TV expert Jerrica Sands calls it the most damaging show a child can watch, explaining oh. the sneaky ways in which they make the show addictive. Firstly, there's the colours. Take, for example, the wheels on the bus. The three main colours, blue, green and yellow, are all at maximum saturation, meaning they cannot be made any brighter, no matter how hard you try. Extreme saturation is normally used for alerts and notifications, as it's exciting, dynamic and attracts attention, which is why it's also used in slot machines. Coco Melon puts these colours in perfect contrast, making them appear even more vibrant, which is different to, for example, Bluey, in which the colours instead blend together. Coco Melon's also different because it's highly repetitive. There's a reason they have 38 videos with over a billion views. A child's brain is wired to learn through repetition, so it feels right to them to watch the same thing over and over again. Coco Melon abuses this in almost every video. For example, in the Yes Yes Playground song, they pick a word to repeat three times in every sentence, pairing it with a subtly repeating background lullaby, keeping children hooked. Literally, no show or movie puts my son into a deep trance the way Coco Melon does. The second it's on the TV, he turns into a toddler zombie oh, who doesn't scary. see or hear anything else that's going on in the room. This is only exacerbated by Coco Melon. Wait, Melon's and she went on to say, yeah. it freaks me out, so we don't have it on very often. Is this show bewitching all the towers in America or just mine? <gasps> else that's going on in the room. This is only exacerbated by Coco Melon's subtitles, which have also been. But the kids are stupid, they can't read. The letters are not educational. I can barely read them fast enough. It's simply another interesting element to capture your little one's attention. Coco Melon explains in every description, our goal is to help make learning a fun and enjoyable nah, experience you're trying to make kids, kids stupid. giving you the peace of mind that your children are receiving quality educational content. But people have argued that they're teaching exactly what children shouldn't do. For example, in the No No Bedtime song, the baby refuses to brush his teeth, have a bath, put on pajamas, or get in bed. What the other cartoon? The education is that he eventually agrees. Who's that little ball head cartoon that everybody had? Kalu? He, don't he do the same thing? ...do so, yet a TikTok user was critical, stating, anytime I'd ask my son to do a simple task, he'd say no, no, no. He's sitting there watching Coco Melon, which taught him no, 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 and to say no to me. On the topic of education, Jerrica Sand stated, these people don't give a shit about our children. They care about money. That's it. Your child's cognitive development in direct exchange for their wealth, mm. and there's pretty good evidence supporting this. A New York mm. Times journalist visited Coco Melon studio discovering their number one focus is keeping children hooked. Coco Melon's data and analytics team sifts constantly through YouTube numbers to determine exactly what resonates. Should a girl wear black jeans or blue jeans? Should the music be louder or softer? Should the bus be yellow or red? Yellow is the answer as they use a darker method to ensure that they're correct. Coco Melon has a dedicated Distractatron room in which once a month children are brought here one at a time and shown a handful of episodes to figure out exactly which parts of the shows are engaging and which are tuned out. Next to the TV play Coco Melon, there's a second screen which plays a continuous loop of banal real-world scenes. A guy pouring a cup of coffee, someone getting a haircut, each lasting about 20 seconds. Whenever a youngster looks away from the Moonbug show to glimpse the Distractatron, a note is jotted down. We can see what they're looking at and the exact moment when they got distracted. Therefore, education clearly isn't the primary goal. Keeping kids' attention mm -hmm. is, and this is proven by Coco Melon's most addictive element, rapid camera cutting. It's crazy how many times the frame changes on Coco Melon. It's the same type of addicting behavior that we experience on a TikTok binge. It's the quick change of frame that releases that dopamine and makes the videos addicting to watch. Count the seconds between a change of frame. 
Well, TikToker the circus brain did exactly this. He firstly counts the changes on My Little Pony, concluding there's about six seconds between each cut. He then compares it to Cocomelon. Uh, I was watching a video and they said Mr. Beast does this too. He makes sure his videos do the same thing. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one. Two one, two one, <laughs> two one, two one. In her video, the nightmare that is Cocomelon, Cervantes draws a similar conclusion. She found that ninety six percent of the shots in Baby Shark were shorter than two seconds. She then compares four different animated shows, again finding Cocomelon has the shorter shots. The longest shot on a Cocomelon video was six seconds. The longest shot on Arcane was eight seconds. Okay. The longest shot on Bluey was twenty seven seconds. And the longest shot on Encanto was eighteen seconds. Which, when combined, the with second and fourth shot elements, looks creates some like terrifying statistics. Doctor Kristen Summer explained that when showing an infant normal video content, they'll focus on the screen just eleven percent of the time. However, when the video is instead switched to Cocomelon, their screen engagement skyrockets to a whopping 74%. This therefore produces stories such as this. I used to volunteer for a preschool and they had song time. A Cocomelon video came on and all of the tots stopped what they were doing, put down their cheese crackers and remained fixated on the screen for the duration of the video. It was honestly kind of terrifying. YouTuber Saberspark shared his own personal anecdote. He asked to watch a Disney movie with his two younger cousins, who both completely refused, and instead spent all day glued to an iPad playing the addictive show. In Cocomelon Made My Kid a Zombie, a mother talks about her son. He would be in a daze while watching it. You could be waving your hand right in front of his face, and he wouldn't move. It was almost scary. This was also discovered by Sarah Mills 98, who explained when the Cocomelon addiction is so real that my one year old can navigate the TV to turn it on by himself. However, nothing shows the addiction better than the Cocomelon TikTok trend. Parents will play the show's intro loudly and video their kids sprinting toward the television where you can witness their mood change instantly. The New York Times journalist found something similar. The kid in the Distractatron had yeah, shown they, up they in the midst of a tantrum, which ended the second he heard the Coco Melon theme song. It was no surprise to Wheeler, the head of research. 99% of kids, he said, if they're having issues when they get here, once that Coco Melon song comes on, they're like, ah, life is okay, all is good with the world. Obviously, there's a reason for this. Cocomelon is so hyper-stimulating that it actually acts as a drug and what happens when you take the drug away. Young children experiencing symptoms of addiction and withdrawal, obviously leaving them completely dysregulated. TikTok user ThePoff1 feels what said, happens- What did I just say? I said crack. Didn't I say crack? Didn't I say the crackheads? Away, explaining he'll be inconsolable for at least 10 to 15 minutes after, adding in the description, Cocoa Melon Meltdown is legit. Once you have a taste of the cocoa, it's hard to break The cocoa, the that's crazy. Which this Reddit user had experienced Crack cocaine. Cocoa. My husband and I have cocaine. been worried about our child. I can slowly see how she'd throw violent tantrums at home and in church whenever she'd get bored and would want to watch the show. Her behaviour changes the moment she watches the show, and she will not even eat her meals if she wouldn't watch it. After these tantrums end, kids can experience a general discomfort in the speed of everyday life. The more they watch the show, the more their brain begins to expect this intense level of stimulation. Basically, Coco mm. Melon overstimulates their brains so much that everything else just seems slow and boring in comparison. However, the potential mm. consequences get much worse than this. As mentioned at the start, it was the cause of a child's speaking problems, with a notable reply reading, same thing happened with my daughter too. She's four but can't speak properly. She knows the words, but she does not like to frame the sentence or speak. Should you blame this on Coco Melon? Um, mm. She has been watching these Coco Melons or such other stuffs for two or three years. Hope we're not too late. Over on Reddit, a speech language pathologist explained that screen time in general is linked with speech delays for a variety of reasons, but Coco Melon is excessively bad. 
Firstly, unlike other TV shows or movies, it doesn't have a story. It's just very short clips with poorly written songs. The kids aren't able to follow the plot, learn vocabulary, and see the resolution of a conflict supported by infant specialist Meg Fora. And the problem with fast-paced TV programs is we find that little one's language development is slower. On the Agents of Speech YouTube channel, this is again confirmed. The main problem with watching videos on the internet is that they don't know how to use the language that they learn. But he adds that four to five hours of screen time per day can make a toddler completely non-verbal. That's four a long time. hours is obviously a lot of time. But in Coco Melon Made My Kid a Zombie, researchers discovered that five-year-olds who watch more than two hours of TV a day tended to have lower attention spans and were 7.7 .7 times more likely to show symptoms of ADHD. These screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically because as Wait, it says it causes D. autism? I thought that's something you're born with. I don't know enough about these things. These screen times might be even lower for Coco Melon specifically because as explained by Jerrica Sands, not all screen time is created equal. A child who just watched 30 minutes of Coco Melon and a child who just watched 30 minutes of Trash Truck will look like a very, very different child. Thankfully, here lies a simple solution. Sierra Renee explained my two-year-old is speech delayed and addicted to Coco Melon. Okay, I switched to Miss Rachel two Get days ago and he's already saying more words and hasn't had any tantrums. Kim.it shared an almost identical anecdote. My eight-month-old was obsessed with Coco Melon and having bad tantrums, so I cancelled Coco Melon and only let her watch Miss Rachel and she said her first word within the first three days of watching. Clearly, parents are able to simply change the channel, but not before leaving Coco Melon a massive amount of dislikes. They've therefore earned the title The Absurdly Popular Kids Show Parents Hate, and Coco Melon has actually responded to the criticism that explain how shows they are not this is to job replace outdoor playtime and playdates. They have a place in children's entertainment. See, <laughs> our shows are not intended to replace outdoor playtime or playdates. I mean, that's also a fact. I'm, I'm thinking that too. I'm like, uh, can y'all entirely blame Coco Melon? You turn the shit on. It's it's your laptop, your tablet that you giving to your kid. I mean, you are in control of these things. So I'm confused how y'all putting all the blame on Coco Melon. Time and as with food, exercise, etc., it comes down to each parent Facts. to find the right and appropriate balance for. I agree children. with that. But if this show is causing addiction, <laughs> you know, behaviors, then that's probably not a show I would want to turn off for my child at all, like ever. Our responsibility is ensuring that the quality of the content that we produce is high and beneficial for the development of a child's cognitive but and skills. But y'all aren't right there, though. It is worth adding that our social media communities are filled with stories of parents who experience firsthand how Moonbug content helps their children. Coco Melon does have a Moonbug. crazy amount of supporters, but it's obvious that some of them are simply ignoring the downsides. My baby learned the alphabet and numbers from Coco Melon. She may not speak a complete sentence, but she expresses she her wants to phrases. <laughs> but is it Coco Melon's responsibility to ensure that babies Goodbye. are talking? Well, no. People love blaming cartoons and games for raising children and not the shitty parents that don't step in to stop them from watching that so part, much. That part. Coco Melon is actually a really sad symbol of parents giving their children tablets instead of actually parenting and interacting with them. Ultimately, mm. parents are the people who choose how much their child consumes. That is a fact. There's this girl that I watch who has a vlog channel and I guess she was giving her her son you know, an iPad all the time. And for hours and hours a day, he was like addicted to this iPad. And he clearly had behavioral problems and couldn't really speak that well. So she started to limit his iPad time. And he was throwing tantrums over it. But apparently now he's like talking better. <laughs> and all type of shit. So yeah, y'all parents are to blame as well. Could Coco Melon be doing some weird shit behind the scenes to try to keep your kid addicted? That is possible. You might not want to put this on for your kid at all. But overall, you are in control of how long they have the damn iPad. That, that's on you as a parent. Like, what, what are y'all talking about? But, yeah, this is like crack to kids. <laughs> you might want to stay away. You don't want your kid being a crackhead. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see you on the next time. Bye!